a little bit in that. So we had to make some adjustments. Um, so during COVID, we focused on providing educational support for children, especially the year that schools were closed. We've made food deliveries, um, given some rental assistance and some utility assistance to some families. And that was thanks to a disaster relief grant from the ELCA. And provided school supplies. And since the fire has been a little more limited, we've really done online worship and faith formation, home visits. Pretty much everything else is on hold until that rebuild. So that sounds like a long resume of stuff, but <laughs> that's just kind of an overview of um, this young know, different ministries. Um, do we have any questions before I go on to the next? Where's the physical location? Physical location was that connect. Oh, sorry, Tacoma. We in Tacoma. So South Tacoma, if you're familiar with Tacoma, it's like South 76th and Sheridan. Okay, so community cares connection is um, a nonprofit organization that was formed by both United Lutheran Church and Museo Nederland for the non-religious uh, outreach programs. And we created this in order to be able to take advantage of grant opportunities um, that are not available to religious entities. So we kind of separated out our non-religious ministries to put under the umbrella of community care connections. And so we were part of a, a cohort with the church-wide ELCA, and we had uh, our retreats with um, church-wide people that had taught us how to create these nonprofits and to find where the needs are in the ministry, and this could be in the community. And um, then we worked to work in partnership with other groups like Pizza schools in the area. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and other partnerships that we can find from Grow Vision and other partnerships. And so, again, we received a grant right before the pandemic started. And so, some of the projects that we had planned on have not gotten off the ground yet. Um, but what we have done, well, okay, I'll back up. We have a community garden, and that has been able to operate through the pandemic and through the fire, thanks to a very generous neighbor who um, took a garden hose from his house all the way into the community garden. He said, Did you use that water? And so, yeah, he's an amazing, amazing neighbor, and very supportive of the garden. And so, in the past, we've had groups come up from the school to do some you know, gardening classes with the kids. We've Pierce County Gardens come out with some bilingual speakers that do some teaching in Spanish about different gardening techniques. And then the produce either goes, you know, the gardener can keep the produce or can go to the food bank. Um, the United also has a food bank that benefits from our, our garden. And so since the fire and pandemic, our focus has been on projects that we can do in borrowed space. So it's so we have to be able to bring people into our space, but we've kind of been sending out the sending out the larger services, so to speak. Um, some of the projects we did this year are um, the back school backpacks. We filled up backpacks with school supplies. We delivered them to an elementary school and a middle school for the students in need there. Um, in October, we created some hygiene kits for homeless teens. We just um, communicated with some different shelters and said, what's your biggest need? And so these were cloth drawstring bags full of, you know, socks and toothpaste and razors and, you know, typical stuff you would associate with needing. And these were sent to the Tone School in Tacoma, which is for homeless children, um, the Oasis Coffee Shelter for Homeless Teens, and the Harbor Coast Center. And we made about 50 of these. And then in November, we gave out food boxes to families for Thanksgiving dinner. And then for our December project, um, we thought about this a while 
and decided that we really couldn't adopt families this year because of you know the financial pandemic and the fire and supply issues and we we're just pretty much exhausted. But we still wanted to do something. So I actually borrowed an idea from the food backpacks for kids program here. And we created some baking kits for um, cookies. So we put all the ingredients needed for um, sugar cookies and the sprinkles and the um, cookie cutters all together in a box. And then added a bag of household goods like lunch, soap, and toilet paper, tissue towels, and that kind of thing. And um, because of the generosity of the community and world vision, we're also able to set up like a small little store for families to come and you know take what will work for their family. So we did that just yesterday. That was a lot. That was a lot of fun. Um, so for our future, when we get rebuilt, what our plan is to strengthen the partnership with the local schools, especially one across the street from us. And start an um, after school tutoring program and some, um, like, we start the arts festivals and uh, a weekend food backpack program. And so, the last ministry, um, United Lutheran and CCC, this is a very much of an overlap, but they all, that United has operated a, a small food bank for quite a number of years. And it was open on a weekly basis until the pandemic shut down. And for a while, we kind of delivered food through the window. Um, of course, the fire totally shut that down. But what's been amazing about this food bank is again another illustration of God's abundance. Because you know we've had some times when we've been in there and you know what maybe shelves that have like two cans of food on them. I'm wondering what are we going to do? I don't think we'll be open next week. And Literally, while we're standing in the food bank and we knock on the door, we open it and there's a man with a truck with 200 pounds of food to donate. We had no idea it was coming. But this has happened so many times. It's just really an amazing thing to, to witness over and over again. And the other primary ministry that is taking place at United is a Wednesday community lunch. And this was a free lunch available for anyone who shows up. And it tended to be um, some of the low income people in the neighborhood, but also um, the homeless population that got to know that we were there. And um, a lot of seniors who just want the company. So they come for the you know, companionship. And it was really nice to watch this lunch program form its own community where people got to know each other and they were watching out for each other. And we've had times when like a certain, you know, homeless person had not been seen in a while, people will go, you know, find them and say, you know, are you okay? Do you need something? And so it really formed a really nice community of people watching out for each other. And so we are looking forward to getting that up and running again. Um, as I keep saying, we get rebuilt. <laughs> so, um, So that program runs on volunteers who are both um, congregation members and community members. So that's been a really nice way to bring in the community. Yeah. And some of them have actually joined up when they find out we're not too scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's and of course, okay, so I have to say, you're probably familiar with these, but I'll just recap some of our newer ministries. So just this month, we started up a college kids ministry that is keeping connected with our you know, kids who are away at college by sending care packages a couple times a year. With, um, some of you may have signed the Christmas cards that were out on the table a couple weeks ago. So yeah, those were sent out at the beginning of December along with some some little treats like candy, some little, you know, stress buster toys like Play Doh and little flying things, and, you know, stuff you would do on a late night when you're in college. <laughs> um, Kids Night Out started last week, and um, it's going to be, you know, tuned and expanded. 
this is an opportunity for kids to come, hang out with other kids, do some organized activities together, and parents get a couple hours off. And then we are also exploring um, the possibility of community gardens. And right now it's kind of in the planning and seeing how much is feasible phase. So you'll be hearing more about that probably in the springtime. And we've also partnered with Lutheran Community Services a couple of times. Once was for us for our hands day when we made the cards, and those were sent out to isolated seniors. And again, with the ornaments that a lot of you participated in making. And those have also been delivered to seniors throughout the community through their Santa Senior program. So I'm out of words. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Um, I've got two. First of all, how many members at United are involved in these projects and programs? I mean, is it the same people? Is it 10 people? Is it 40 people? Just curious, because there's a lot of projects you're supporting. There's a lot of projects. Um, we do have a, a main core of volunteers, maybe 10 people, um, and it kind of rotates in and out a little bit. And that's pretty small. I mean, total membership is probably about 80, 80, 90 people. So, but it's, um, they have a very strong outward uh, focus into the community. Um, so sometimes it's a little too strong when we say, okay, let's, let's, you know, gather in and do something, you know, for the church community every once in a while, you know, keep those relationships strong. Okay, and thank you. And, and the second question I had was, um, what aspect of your ministry here at on this day brings you the most joy and interest? Um, I love working with kids. So, um, you know, the Sunday school faith formation, um, night out, that's a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy working with people on different projects as a way to get people to know people and hearing their stories. Yeah, same thing, being creative. Uh, what's the uh, timeline on rebuilding? That's a really good question. Um, originally, we helped do that by this Christmas, but um, we're actually just permit stage. So we're waiting for permits. We're hoping that after the permits get um, approved that mm, five to six months after the approval. But you know there's been so many delays with COVID and supplies and this was just going to be a wait and see kind of thing. Hopefully by next Christmas. <laughs> Uh, you have a contractor for that? Yes, we do. Oh, <laughs> you ever hear of Lutheran Mission Builders? I didn't hear. Lutheran Mission Builders. Oh, no. No, we're um, using Corsmo. Um, they, they built the addition on about 15 years ago or so, and, and they, um, so we're familiar with them, they're familiar with us, and they have the blueprints already. <laughs> Yeah, this is an organization that uh, it, it'll, it'll reduce your cost of between uh, 20 and 30 percent. Oh, really? Uh, it's volunteers I work with for oh, wow. years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So tell me the name again. It's called Lutheran Mission Builders. Lutheran Nation? Mission. 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 Sorry. Yeah, yeah that's too I know. Great. You already have a contract. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good to know the major reference. You said the formation of community connections was relative to getting grants that were not church affiliated. Mm -hmm. Yes, we um, we were part of a cohort called Sustainable Ministries, and part of what they did was um, taught us how to kind of look look at a community and the ministries and where the strengths are and what the needs are in the community, and form um, a nonprofit, and then. Um, how to apply for different grants. And um, so the one we're currently working under is um, it's an ELCA grant that's um, 
focus on children, children and their families. And they had two, two options, either children and families or this one for seniors. I heard that the Senate funding for, uh, I don't know if it's a community connections or whatever has been, or will end. Um, can you comment on that as to why that is and how that affects you? Um, okay, so that, that would be for Ms. Young and then why that is, is some of it is that, so it was set up by the previous DEM, and the new DEM is not too crazy about the way it was set up. And the current what? What? DEM. Oh, sorry. That's the director of the Excel Coalition in the Senate office. And, um, and the other part of it is just like this poor little ministry, everything's gone wrong for it um, between um, the COVID, the fire. Um, so it's kind of been stalled out. But the good news is the ministry is not going to be lost. Um, the outreach programs are going to be absorbed by community care connections. And then after we get the that back, we'll look into how we can continue with my people worship. So the ministry itself is not funded anymore, but the ministries practically will continue. Um, but at least for me, it is a, you know, in very practical terms, it's, you know, reduction in income. So I'll just be adding another job in somewhere. <laughs> so how, how much of your, how much of your income, how much is that about to? I'm sorry, I said, you know, how much of that, what percentage of that, of your, of your income came from that source? Um, I can't give you an exact figure on that because it was CCC and Monsieur Nicolet and United were all kind of putting money into this. And going into next year, we kind of have to reevaluate well, how much can United, you know, put in with our current circumstances and how much does CCC. So overall, it's, um, and so those numbers are different. So overall, it's about 25% less. That's a guesstimate. I don't have exact numbers at this point. Yeah, I know that's something Julie's working on right now. All those and the representative from the Senate to work now on the numbers. So what percentage of that area is um, Spanish speaking? What percentage? You're, you're pulling, it sounds like they're pulling from that area for Mission Day Milan around United Lutheran. Is there a big population of Spanish speaking people in that? Um, there, there are. I, I don't know the exact numbers. I know that the elementary school across the street is about 20% ESL. But, and it's not just, you know, focus just around that um, church and just people in a little bit further, too. Is there a in office that wants to substitute some other program for the Spanish speaking people? Or is it just, um, what's, what's, their, what's their lack of interest based on? Um, I don't think it's a lack of interest, it's a lot of money. Um, and I think, you know, that with basically with the location currently unavailable and, you know, you kind of thought, well, putting some money into it, you can't really put any ministry until, you know, we get rebuilt. So they said, you know, maybe in a year, if you want to start again, that we can Look at that, but you know, it's just li very limited funds for all the mission stars that are out there. And so, you know, it's it's not a surprise, it's, it's um, discouraging, but it's not going to stop the mission from happening. It's just going to take a little bit of form.
So as someone who's totally new to this group, can you explain your role a little more? Are you called by the Synod? Are you called by United Lutheran? Who is United Lutheran? Um, how does all of this tie together? What's your connection to ISA? Um, I'd just like to better understand who you are and how you got here. <laughs> It, it, it is a little bit of a confusing setup, I will admit. So my call comes from I'm going to say, and then the way it has been set up in the past couple of years is, um, so my, my original call from here was half time, and then they made it full time, but the, but the other half is basically um, rented out, so to speak, to United, um, United yeah. and CCC, all of their responsible for the full other half of the finances. Um, so with these change, it'll just, you know, put me down to like three quarter time and we're still working out the detail. But yeah, my official call is to act this day. Okay. And um, the title here is um, Minister of Programs. Can you talk a little bit about the programs that you help with? Um, here at ASA, since they're new here. Sure. I, the three here I talked about before, you already answered the question. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you already did that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> or, yeah, and then actually, I talked about some of our new ministries. So, some of the other stuff I do is um, volunteer coordinating. So, um, like if you're a usher, you'll be getting emails from me saying, you know, how we use ushers for these events or if we have. Special services, as we see, all the staff with all the people who are scheduling you know, lectures or altar meals or we'll say this is what we need for the service and just make sure that all those spots are filled. And then bring that information to our Avanto system, which will give you those nice little reminder emails that you need to schedule for this event. Um, I do a lot with the faith formation, you know, find the Science school, finding the science school curriculum, sending it out to the science school teachers and getting them scheduled. And um, also, the, since COVID, the um, take home science school kits that you'll see out in the um, North Texas, we bring those together. And um, yeah, just looking into future um, children's ministries and what, what is needed and what will be successful in this location. Are you involved with? Uh, Preschool. I'm not involved in preschool now. Other than you go down and visit once in a while, you're involved. <laughs> <laughs> so how many how many people do you have in the um, this inaugural parent uh, night off thing? <laughs> Okay, well, we had eight little people. So, yeah, our first run, and we didn't have a lot of lead up time. So, yeah, yeah so I think that's going to grow. And, and then my plan is to make it add more activities and be more building so the kids can you know, more to choose from. So, so that's going to be a growing program. And a lot of fun. So, if you want to volunteer, you can hang out with us. You'll have a good time. <laughs> Danny's 11 year old granddaughter told her everything went well and didn't go well. So, <laughs> <laughs> what, say that again? Danny's 11 year old granddaughter gave, her, gave him the, the lowdown on how it went. Any other questions? Do you have plans for service on the trip school again? Taking the level school? Yeah, vacation Bible school. There, there will be vacation Bible school. Um, we're, we're not in the planning stages yet. But of course, you know, we have to see what COVID does. But I think, you know, we did an, uh, an in person day last summer and we kept everything outside and it was fine. So I, I think we'll be good to have vacation Bible school. Next year, and easy to do everything outside in the summertime. Besides children, and, and I'm not here to team, but I'm saying younger children. Besides that, and your 
scheduling with the worship coordinators. What's your interaction with other adults? Um, occasionally I'll pop in with the um, knitters. It's not so much this month, it's just with the Venus. Um, you know, worship, choir, um, and some other. When I first started, we started working on the um, senior outreach um, program that the you guys call it, I don't remember now, but it, that you put one on every year with St. John. So I started working on that and then um, totally shut it down. It's like a couple years ago was the one on um, downsizing. And then this year was going to the last, no, two years ago, right, pre COVID, it was going to be um, like relationships, senior relationships. And um, like I said, totally shut that down, but we'll, we'll, we'll get that back going at some point. Um, What, what would you like to see? What are some visions that you could see here and at United when it gets rebuilt? What, what would you like to see for the future? I mean, we have all these setbacks now and they've had a big setback. But do you have any ideas for what could happen here and could be real vibrant here? Um, I think it would be nice to have some ministries that are meeting here that are bring people in from the community whether that be um like after school program for kids um meal program even just like once a month um the community garden i think was, is, a, is an awesome way to bring the community in and to also you know build community in the church and supply you know food to the hungry um i love the idea of the little pantry that could go out by the road or you know whoever little free country you could call so people can come and you know, take take the groceries that they need. <laughs> well like Sunday school we don't have very many kids so do you see any way we can Grow, we could get more kids, or do you have any ideas for? Well, yes. Some, some, of it is a, some of the parents I've talked to just say that they're just not coming until their kids are fully vaccinated. They're just not comfortable with it yet. So I think when you know we get past that stage, that more kids will come back. Um, some of the kids' night out programs, and some of those that are um, that are easy to invite friends to, you know, families can invite their friends and neighbors to a program like that. And then once they get to know people, you know, you know have Sunday school too on Sunday morning, you know, invite your friends. And so, yes, it's, it's relationship building. So provide the opportunity. But how, how yeah, like, uh, could that be publicized that the night out for, we have so many new families here at Gate Park, new people coming. Is that, do you see any way we could publicize that or? Um, um, so it, it was pub it's been publicized on, um, besides our website on Facebook and the you know, public, our public domain. Um, also an option is to publicize through the schools if that's within the school's uh, policy. Some schools will allow that and others won't. So that's, I mean, we can't, they won't do Sunday school, but like kids night out program might be able to publicize. Like, I need to check with the schools and see what they have policy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, other than that, there's things like, um, like the Nextdoor app, you can publicize things on, I guess. Word of mouth. I mean, invitation is the thing. Best, best method, but there are other ways of publicizing. Mostly social media. I just thought of one. 
um, kind of some weird points, but it, it does communicate a lot of information. What's the ratio of adults to chicken? Yeah. And if you're going to grow with this, the bigger and you have more adults. Um, yeah, and so I would like to have a ratio of five to one at the least. I mean, more is better. I mean, more kids and more adults, but we got five to one. Do you think you need to start being an authorization? No, I don't. That's just that teaches that. Okay. You think it would be opportune for us to create a nonprofit to be available to, uh, to bring more people in easier? Yeah, I think uh, a nonprofit would be excellent for the preschool for little lambs. Um, that would open that up to a lot of you know educational funding. And you could um, perhaps with some of that funding as you know some scholarship students. Um, and then um, yeah, so if you wanted to start other outreach ministries that yeah. could either you know fall under the same you know umbrella of the nonprofit or a separate nonprofit. I know it's been a lot of talk about affordable housing, um, so that could be something that a uh, nonprofit could be formed or the um, parking lot. Um, so yeah, so there's definitely a lot of potential there, and then you need somebody who's good. Matt writing to make the Matt writing because that's a real specialty. I know that there's a few things. So, Council is trying to figure out what to do with the house. Um, and I don't know if it's a concrete idea. We're aware of this quote unquote, but there's several tiny house villages in Tacoma, and there there's a cooperation between the church and the city. My home work at here at Paul Wilson High School is about 14 tiny houses that are fenced in the community. And so we're there and we're excited about this and going up. Well, I know that the city was involved in um, an affordable housing project. Actually, they're still looking into it. Um, they're planning on partnering with Compass Housing, which is up in Miami, and they do uh, they call, they're called locket um, houses that kind of look like ladles. They're on top of each other. Um, so they look nicer than they sound. <laughs> um, are they expecting monthly story? Yeah, they are. And, and it's not, um, and it's intended to be permanent housing, not temporary. So it's not transitional. And um, so they had different churches that were interested, um, had people from the Senate and the Blackables come look at their property and tell them, you know, yes, we can build here, um, maybe, but you can get some changes, or you know, it's not going to work here. And so this was project, project going on for a while, and um, then the Blackables. And Compass Housing said, you know what, we can't do Pierce County. We we you know, we're overextended. So that kind of put a halt on it. But the um, the task force, the Senate task force is still in existence and it's still at work. But they're kind of starting the square one brainstorming of what this look like in the Senate. Um, how can we um, create affordable housing on church property? Is there a certain person in the Senate office here assigned to that task? Yes, um, the new DEM, Joey, that is, it comes on, on, on his um, on his job. What's it? Yeah, explain. Oh, sorry. In um, that last name, I mean, explain. The, um, the, the director of evangelical mission. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, he's relatively new to it. So, you know, playing catch up after, you know, having nobody in that um, position for a while. I guess you probably won't hear a lot about that until the new year. 
<laughs> Some of these questions, the uh, evangelism group is going to host forum on January 9th. So a lot of these questions that you're asking could be brought up for ideas at that forum. Yeah, Jeff. Thank you, Sister Andy, for coming and sharing this report. Thanks for listening to our rappers. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we won't have a forum for the next two Sundays, and it will be January 9th then for the next forum. Happy to <laughs> <laughs>